Hello. Time for a rant. Sandro is online. Boom. Second place, Sandro. I'm disappointed. So disappointed in you. Today we're kind of going to talk about RC, but it's more, really more of a rant, to be honest. No setup stuff, no building cars. I have something I need to let off my chest here. Let's give it some time, get some people, people watching. Hopefully the right people too. Maybe. Yep. What number should we start at? It's at 60 now. Is that good? You think there's going to be more? Rant it out. Let's see how this goes. Hold here. Hello. Hello, Tom. Kevin Klein. On board. Joseph Cock. Ew. I think we can actually maybe start at 100. There's 75 people. Can you build my car while ranting? No, because this rant isn't going to be that long. I have, I have three stories. Actually, it's a bit more than three stories. But uh, it's three different people. Like three different groups here we're going to cover. I'm going to call these people out on their bullshit. So what are you drinking today? I'm going to have one of these. Cool grape. Lime and mint. A gin drink. Chopstick. Let it rip. Actually, I think this rant would be far better if I was really drunk. Liam tells me that it's epic. But I can't get drunk now. I have to be responsible. It's the middle of the week. Is it Wednesday? I lost a day last week. I need to be sure. Wednesday, yeah. Actually, yeah, the views are over 100 now. So we can start. So, uh, basically, I want to talk about short-sighted idiots today. That's basically the topic, okay? And uh, I have three stories, as I said. Number one is this uh, Malaysian man mental midget. Let's call him Danny Boy. So, I'm going to start off with that story. Second story is about this short-sighted English gentleman who likes to spend other people's money. And then the last story is my personal favorite. It spans many years and there's a number of different events that, to, that have taken place. So I need to give you the full, full details to this. But basically it's this Spanish wannabe Franco who called the police on me at one race and uh, they actually showed up. So I'm going to tell you about how that was when the police rocked up at an RC race. And this, all of these stories are tied together by one thing. And it's the wrong attitude. And that's really my point. And a negative attitude where, for whatever reason, I, I almost feel like these people when they were kids, when they were kids growing up, when they would play hide and seek, I feel like, no one would look for them. You know, so they, they're somehow mentally damaged from just a bad childhood or something. I can't think of any other reason why they act like this. I mean, that's, that's really my best theory. I can't come up with anything else. And I would like to say that I don't hate these people. I, I barely know them, to be honest. My problem with them is just their attitude, their negative attitude. They want to tear other people down. They do stuff which hurts other people, other companies, other brands. 
and indirectly also a lot of other people and potentially just RC racing in general. And I don't think that's cool. So I need to call them out. And uh, then I, I have to kind of start off with a disclaimer because I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm far from perfect. Just ask my ex-girlfriend. She can probably tell you that I'm an idiot. And I accept that. But one thing I'm not is someone who will intentionally do something to harm another company or another person or like I'm so short-sighted that I'll do something which has a negative impact on RC racing or on my even on my own company just to get at someone else and that, that's the kind of stuff that these people do and I just can't stand it so yeah I'm not perfect this isn't about me this is about a problem in the world and we're going to focus on RC now for this. And, and they, these aren't huge things, you know, but over the years when you have enough of them, then at some point it's just like, you know what? I'm going to have to talk about this because this is enough. Like one, one thing on its own is not such a big deal. But all these things together, man, you got a JQ Facebook Live rant. So I start with the first story now. So the first story was this... Uh, I named it the Malaysian Mental Midget, Danny Boy. I, I'll give you some background, okay? Let's start at the beginning. Still about 100 people, that's good. So, it began with this idea to have a race in Indonesia. And the idea came about because I'm going to China to visit my manufacturer, okay? And probably Taiwan too. So China and Taiwan. And then... I figured, okay, I'm over there, I need to go to Indonesia. And the reason I wanted to go to Indonesia is this kid who I sent to school, uh, Fajar, he, um, I need to go see him. I need to go give him his clothing. I need to go speak with him and his family and figure out how to work things out. Because actually, when you come from a messed up family like that, it's not the easiest thing to just, you know, try and uh, change your life. Try and, try and give a kid an opportunity, it's not quite very easy and straightforward to make him understand, hey, look, you got this great opportunity, you need to make the most of it. So I need to go over there and make sure this shit works out. At least then I can say, if it doesn't work out, I did everything I could. So that's why I'm going over there. And then since I'm, since I'm there, we figured, let's have a race. And there's this guy, this kid lives right by an RC track, so it makes sense. But no, we decided with my distributor to fly to another island in Indonesia, which is close to Singapore and Malaysia, and organize the race there. And the reason being that then the, peop the drivers from Singapore and Malaysia could also join in the race. Right? Makes sense, right? So it would have been easier just to have the race there local, but we decided, no, let's move there so that more people can join in. And guess what happened? The day after this was announced, Danny Boy announces that they have a race in Malaysia on the basically the top track there, the number one track. Reason? Just to mess with the JQ race we announced. Why would you do that? Like, what's the point? There are Malaysian guys who want to go to that race, the JQ race. And then you organize another race so that you split the people. That is so stupid. This happens in California too. There are a few tracks and then they organize races on the same days. Can you just, for fuck's sake, can you decide which days you have races so the people can go to all the tracks and race on all the tracks? And then, then one track can get all the people one day. Then the next time, the other track can get all the people. Instead of this ridiculous fighting over the same people. It's so stupid. But anyway, Danny Boy kind of made a big mistake. He was so excited about this. He was so, oh, I'm going to get JQ, I'm going to organize a race. He didn't even check. The track is closed. They can't even have the race there because the track's closed. That's how dumb this guy is. Come on. Really. Jesus. Christ. 
now the posts have been removed. They're like, oh, we're going to reschedule this and that. But I just, like, why would you do that? Why? I, dumb. It's stupid. Greedy. Anyway, that's my first story. That's the warm-up. Second, second round of warm-up coming up. This is a more like a high profile case. This made Neo Buggy. This, uh, I don't exactly know why this came about. I don't know this person myself. I'm not sure I've ever met them, met this person, but I have heard that he doesn't like me. Okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem with him. But then something happened. Um, uh, Basically, this guy, he works for a company that's owned by the biggest or one of the biggest hobby uh, companies in the world, right? So the biggest. Me, I'm one of the smallest. We're definitely one of the smallest international brands in racing. So then me, the smallest international brand in racing, managed to get this outside sponsor into RC and this outside sponsor was an Amer American energy drink and we actually had some really cool plans they included stuff like uh, because this this guy also owned motocross tracks and he was in with the motocross crowd and supercross so it involved organizing RC races together with motocross races. It involved a lot of cross promotion, which would be good for RC racing in general, not just JQ racing, but RC racing in general. Okay. Now, unfortunately that didn't happen and it's not because of this idiot who I'm talking about. It was because of other reasons, because of internal company issues that they then had, which was completely out of my control and out of the control of this person who I made the deal with. So we weren't able to do everything we wanted. But there was this one tiny thing that happened also. So you would think that if someone brings in an outside sponsor into RC and starts kind of start showing signs of doing something new and exciting, that it would be a good thing. And people would be like, oh, that's cool. That's good for RC. No, not this guy. You know what they did? They tried to stop that shit. Threatening lawsuits, this and that. A-Main stopped carrying JQ. Yeah, they did. A-Main Hobby stopped sending JQ racing. You know, that's not nothing. Like, A-Main was, at the time, probably my biggest single customer. Like, biggest dealer, for sure. There's tens of thousands of dollars just like, oh, no anymore, done. Why? The reason was that this outside sponsor's name was too close to the, uh, some ready-to-run brand. So a ready-to-run brand that this guy sells has a similar name to this energy drink that's now sponsoring JQ Racing. And that's just unacceptable. We can't have that. You know, screw these guys. What a, what a great way of thinking, right? What a great guy this person is. I think that's what a productive way to think and go about things. Don't you, th don't you think? Just awesome. This guy's my hero. So potentially we can do all these great things. I don't know. We, we want to sell these ready to runs and, and I think people might confuse them with energy drinks. Jesus Christ. So anyway, I, I don't know exactly why I thought of this right now, but uh, I need to show you something. I, I was going to start this video with this, but I forgot. I, I'm actually, before I, before I tell you about the police, the police coming to arrest me at a RC race, before that, I'm going to show you something. Give me, give me one minute.
Okay. Whew. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, dude. I just put 180 people on hold. I'm really sorry, but I just forgot. Uh, Rick Howard. Short sighted and RC have gone hand in hand for as long as I have been racing. Yes, I agree. I don't even want to get into some of the bigger political things. These are like, these are perf personal beefs I'm covering. But anyway, uh, it reminded me of something. Actually, today is a really happy day because I have now officially bought my first Durango. Fucking A. I'm so happy. I mean, we're running the exchange program and this guy really wanted a black edition. So you know what? 200 euros for an old electric Durango. I think it's well worth it. Well worth it. Anyway, I just, I just wanted to share that with you. So we got out one, one new happy a JQ racer. That's cool. Anyway, back to my story. I see, I see a lot of people like that. Yeah, I'm pretty excited myself. I think it's a, this, this is going to be a good promotion. I can feel it. So, uh, then the last story. The last story is a long one. This one started, it, it's incredible. It's really incredible. This story started back in, I believe, 2006. 2006 or 2007, around then. And back then I was racing Hobao. And I was racing for Ultimate Racing, which is a Spanish brand started by Mark Ibars. He used to be, I don't know how you say that, Ibars, maybe? Something like that. He used to be a really, really good driver. He made multiple Euros A mains. I think he's even made the podium, like second or third. Robert, Mark Ibars has made the podium at the Euros, I think, right? And he's made the world's main at least once. Uh, he was in the main in Vegas. He raced, raced the chrono anyway. So anyway, top guy top racer he started his own brand yes he finished second at the euros so yes pro racer he started his own brand they made accessories and oil like shock oils diff oils tools they distributed i wonder why i was i think i just was running with them or were they selling hobao i can't remember anymore maybe they were anyway just like around this time after this time he quit racing focused on the company and help uh, Robert Batier, how do you say your name? Robert Battle. He helped him in racing and that's it. So I went there as their guest to race the Spanish Nationals. They organized everything. They bought my license, they signed me up for the race. And I can't remember now 100%, but I think there was some issue already before the race. But it was like, ah, no big deal. I mean, you have the license, just fly over. So I flew down there. I get to the race and then shit starts going sideways. And you know me, like what, there's one thing which I just can't change about me. When there's injustice, like when someone's being a dick and getting away with it, I just can't deal with it. I just, I can't handle it. I can't just be quiet and go away or no, it doesn't work. So I don't know really how I managed to handle this situation so well, but I did. So practice day. Uh, fucking this Spanish Franco rocks up and says, JQ, you can't race. I'm like, okay. I just flew to Spain. I have the license. I've entered and paid the entry. And now you say I can't race. Nope. JQ, you can't race. I'm like, fuck, what a waste of time. They argue in Spanish for a while. I'm just waiting in the pits. They're like, nah, you can't race, JQ. Then I'm like, nah, well, at least I'll practice. Because it was open practice. So I'm like, I'll practice today and we'll figure out what to do. So now I can't practice either. So then JQ steps in. He, this guy goes away. I'm like, fuck it. I borrowed someone's body and just went to practice. So then I, I'd been running for a while and then he sees me on the driver's stand, not on the track because he doesn't know my car, obviously, because I'm running someone else's body. So he saw me on the driver's stand. He comes up and this is, we were still running antennas back then. Uh, sorry, I should, I should uh, tell the whole story first. So 
I was close to the end of the lap, but he didn't know where my car was. He was just talking to me. He said, JQ, driving the pits now, you can't practice. So I'm almost coming in the pits. I just hopped the pipe so I have almost a full lap to go, just to mess with this guy. So he gets mad because it's taking so long. I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm driving in the pits. So he gets mad, he tries to grab my antenna and break it. So then I'm driving like this, like I'm holding my radio on, leaning forward, like, hey, what are you doing? Just let me drive in the pits. So I drove in the pits and this guy's mental. He's yelling at me. He's all up in my face. I'm just, just relax. I was just practicing. Come on. So then we walked to the steps and he pushed, like when we got to the stairs, he pushed me. So I, I didn't fall. Like I skipped a few steps and got a uh, hold of the railing and I stopped. I went back. I was like this close to his face, this close. And I yelled, don't fucking touch me. Okay. That, that shut him up for a while. Walk back to the pits and then he's going real ape shit on the Spanish guys. So now they're arguing again. And then what happened next was pretty cool actually. And Roberts was also in involved. So all the drive, the practice was going on, right? Cars were racing. So all the drivers went out on the, on the front straight. So they were standing on the track and uh, no one could practice. So they stopped practice and then they had to have an extra driver's briefing. And they were discussing like, should JQ be allowed to race or not? And the drivers said, yeah, he should be allowed to race. Like everyone was like, yeah, yeah. And this one fucking guy, this one guy was saying, no, no, he can't race. No, he's not Spanish enough. You know, just no, we can't do it. Rules are rules. We can't do it. That's it. And these guys were standing on the track saying, listen, you idiot. He's come all the way here and you're going to tell him he can't race. Come on, let him race. And then finally, this guy says, ah, you know what? Anyone still left standing on the track will lose their license. I believe that's what he said. And losing your license is kind of a big deal. Because if you lose your license, you can't do the nationals and you also can't do the European championships and you also can't do the world championships. So at this point, I knew I was done for. I knew like, yeah, that's it. So slowly but surely, everyone kind of walked off the track, except Mark Ibas. He was, he was my hero. He was like, man, I'm not, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. So he, he risked losing his license and all that shit. I don't know if he ever did lose his license, but yeah, he wasn't having any of it. So anyway, then they just told me, JQ, there's no way you can race. Just leave it. And at this point, I don't know how, but I was all cool about it. I was like, okay, no worries. Let's just figure something else out. And we figured out that we could go practice at this other track. And hilariously, I believe this track is actually this idiot's own track or home track. I can't remember how it was, but they just said like, it's his track. I, I don't know if it's like he runs the club or it's his home track or how it works, but they said, you can go to this track. And they were laughing like it's actually his track. So I'm like, yeah, that's perfect. Let's go over there. So I went to this track in Barcelona and practiced for like one and a half days alone while the other guys were racing. And then on the Sunday, uh, I practiced half the day and then uh, the ultimate racing guys, I think Roger picked me up and he drove me to the race. And the idea was that I could, you know, clean up all my gear, rebuild my car and watch the racing. So I could watch the semi-finals and the final, you know, just see how the Spanish nationals are. So I get there, I lay out all my stuff in the pits, I start cleaning my car. Then some guy comes up to me and says, uh, that you, uh, JQ, you, you're not allowed to be here. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not allowed to be here? And then uh, he went away. And this fucking Spanish Franco rocks up again, as if we hadn't had enough problems already. And he's starting to get mad again. And he says, JQ, you're not allowed to be here. You have to leave. And I said, why? Why do I have to leave? He said, there's no room. Okay. So the quarterfinals had run. And you know at races when the lower finals run, the guys who don't make it, they pack up and leave. 
that's how the pits were. Okay, there was like the semi-finalists, few other guys, and me. And then the pits were empty. People were still there watching, but they just packed up their stuff. There's plenty of room. So I pointed this out to this genius. And then he just said, oh, you can't. JQ, if you don't leave now, I'm going to call the police. So here I am, like, wrenching on my car, and this guy's going nuts, f threatening to call the police. I just look up at him, and I said, call the police. And he fucking did. <laughs> so, okay. I can't remember if they stopped an actual race or if they just stopped the race between uh, semifinals or something. But it was the funniest shit ever. So here I am. Imagine this scene. I was in the pits and I see two police cars driving into the track area. Okay? Racing is stopped. The police walk in the pits. At this point, everyone is in the pits. Every single person at that race was in the pits. No one was racing. No one was doing anything on the track. Everyone was in the pits around me. The police walk in. Like I think it was like two policemen and were they even police women? But there was four anyway. They walk in, they surround me. They are only speaking Spanish. <laughs> I, I remember Roger was getting a bit worried. Because I was like saying, like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, fucking call the police, you know? And Roger was like, hey, JQ, you should leave, you should leave. I was like, no, this is wrong. I'm not going anywhere. So then, then the police were there and they surrounded me. Then I was only speaking Spanish. I'm like, I'm just packing up here. <laughs> I'm packing up. So I packed up all my gear. And then as I was leaving, as I was leaving, it was crazy because it was like leaving through a crowd of people. And I was just like, I lifted up my car. I said, hey, thanks. Today's my birthday. Because actually that day was my birthday, which is crazy. But I was like thanking them for my birthday present. So then we walk outside the, the pit area, like the fenced off pit area. And they asked for my ID and passport and everything. So I give that to them. And then they're just like checking all my details and just speaking Spanish with the ultimate racing guys. And some guy walks up to me. I can't remember who this was. He's like, hey, JQ, you want a beer? I'm like, sure. So we go have a drink and uh, sit having a drink. They're just waiting like 30 minutes or whatever. And then uh, uh, the police, I think we walked back to where the police were. And they were like, gave my stuff back and just said, something and i asked the other guys like what's going on and they said yeah you can just go back so this idiot stops the race calls the police and then what happens nothing nothing i can go back in so i go back in spread out my shit clean my car what a fucking idiot can you can you believe at a radio controlled car race a guest driver a guest driver flies in from another country and the police is called. Jesus Christ. That's the level these people go to. So now that you know the sort of history, you can understand the reaction 10 years later. 10 years, crazy, right? Yeah, look, if you don't believe me, believe the world champion Robert Abatier, who was there. He witnessed this. And there's, I only have one regret. There was this one guy who was there for Ultimate Racing filming. And he filmed, he also came to that other track and filmed me there. And he was filming the race. And he filmed this. Like, he had video of the police coming and all this, like, me in the crowd. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. It's my birthday today. And he has video of that, but he refused to send it to me because he, <laughs> he was scared I would post it or do something. So I, I wish I had that. It would be such funny footage to have. So anyway, same guy. Yeah, Jeremy, I, I, the police said I could go back. So I went back in and finished everything. <laughs> I watched the race. I finished everything and that's it. So it's pretty funny. So anyway... 10 years down the road, same guy, same guy as a race director at European Championships in Spain. 
Now, obviously, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, Jake here, don't do anything stupid now, because this guy's fucking race director at the European Championship. If anything, this is the time when he wants to screw you over. Okay? So I make sure I'm uh, perfect racing, you know. No mistakes, always marshalling, no takeouts, nothing. Like, I do everything right. Last day, last day of finals. Uh, Max, Max Mert doesn't marshal his race. So the way they do it at the Euros is you have to, you have to marshal before your race. But it's not the race before your race. It's like you have to look at the schedule, right? So you know, okay, I marshal this race and then I race there. Okay, I got it. So it's the team manager's job to go to the team manager meeting and then come back and tell all, all the drivers, up, oh, you have to marshal here, here, here. Okay, make sure everyone knows what's going on. Now, unfortunately, there was some miscommunication, whatever. Like, I didn't know, Max didn't know. No one seemed to know that Max was supposed to marshal the very first race in the morning. No one knew. And what makes it worse is, I actually, I don't know if it was the very first race in the morning. Because we were already there. Everyone was there. We were in the pits. Everything was fine. And Max didn't marshal. We didn't hear anyone calling for any marshals. Nothing. So I just missed it. Had no idea. And then we just see Max is disqualified. Like, what the hell? Max is disqualified, cannot race his final because he didn't marshal. All right, what? Oh, yeah, Liam. Yeah, country team manager. So Finland's manager was in the meeting, was supposed to tell everyone, make sure everyone knew. Well, whatever happened, I don't know. We didn't know. So Max is, what, 15 years old? He drove for, what, four days from Finland to Spain with me, spent his entire summer holiday practicing, preparing for this race. Everything was ready and he gets told, sorry, dude, you can't race. None of it. It wasn't his fault at all, really. Like, I guess you can say that he should have found out, hey, Am I supposed to marshal? No, it's ridiculous. Mistakes happen, okay? It's not like he intentionally did something wrong. So this kid isn't allowed to race. I'm amazed he took it this well. He was like super chill. I was expecting something to happen. Nothing happened. He was like fucking Iceman Kimi Raikkonen. It's like, hey, you just won the world championship. Oh, cool. Hey, Max, you're not allowed to race. It's like, Nothing, you know, the Finnish way. So then, then I'm like, this, no, this, this can't be happening. Like, he's not going to screw Max. Okay, this guy's not going to screw Max now. So I tried everything. I spoke with him. I spoke with uh, other guys. I spoke with the referee. And everyone's all like, no, nothing we can do. The rules say this. I look at the rule. The rule is like, you can interpret the rule somehow. It can basically mean that you just start last. I say, hey, let Max race, just have him start last in the main, like from the pits. No, nothing, no, we can't do it, unfortunately. This is what the rules state. If you don't marshal, you can't race, that's it. And I said, no, it's not what the rules state. That's how you interpret, interpret the rules. You can also interpret it so you just place him last in the final and he starts last. No, nothing's gonna work out. Like these guys were not having it. You could, there was nothing we could do. Then we even say, okay, just let him race and then disqualify him after the race. Like, if he bumps, he doesn't bump. You know, just let the fucking kid race. No, 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 nothing can be done. Okay, then I just go through everyone in his final and I ask them, is it okay that Max races in the final? Everyone says yes. There was one French kid who was a bit of an arrogant twat, but peer pressure when everyone else said yes, he eventually said yes too. Okay, so then... We were up on the stand before the final started. They delayed it a bit because I went up there. I said, hey, look, we had a vote. All the drivers agree Max should be allowed to race. 
No, 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 fuck it again, they have a meeting, and uh, no, rules are rules, and he can't race, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not, there's nothing we can do. I'm so, what do you mean there's nothing you can do? You are the people who make these decisions. How, do, what do you mean there's nothing you can do? It's like divine intervention, God made this happen. What, really? So you can't just change the rules? No, nothing, you can't do anything. Kid drives from Finland to Spain to race. He can't race because he didn't marshal. There's nothing you can do, really, nothing. Everyone on the driver's stand agrees that he should be allowed to race, but there's nothing you can do, no. So Max goes out in warm-up, because I told him, look, just fucking go out in warm-up. So he did. <laughs> so he does the warm-up, and then the referees are like standing next to him, like, what's this kid going to do? Like, you aren't allowed to race. Like, then, you know, warm-up ends. He just... Pulls it in, mechanic pulls it off, and he just puts his radio down, and, and he's like, sulking. And he watched the race from the driver's stand. So, my, my point is kind of, what, who wins? Who wins in this situation? What is going through your mind that you think the right thing to do is to interpret a rule in a way such that a kid is not allowed to race? What the fuck is wrong with your brain? Right? It doesn't matter whose kid or what car he drives. That should never happen to any kid. No one. Okay? If the rules are such, then they should be changed, right? For the future. One important thing. That rule was not changed. Okay? That's going to be important here when we move on to the next point. So remember, Max was not allowed to race and the rule did not change. Rules are rules. That's what was said. Same race. Same race. Two hours later. After semi-finals, the cars should be placed in uh, scrutineering, technical inspection. So I, I'm in the pits and here's this one guy. And his car is in the pits. And I ask someone, hey, didn't this guy make the main? And he was like, yeah, he did. So why is his car in the pits when the other semifinal is still racing? It should be in technical inspection. He forgot. He didn't realize he didn't take the car there. He just took it in the pits and started wrenching. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. So I start filming because I see this. Spanish Franco rushing up the hill. I see him coming. So I'm filming him. He starts saying to this guy, hey, your car needs to be in the technical inspection. So he starts putting the wheels back on and putting all the bits back on it, which he took off. Hands the car to this uh, dictator. And I just kind of uh, question if rules really are rules. I think video exists of this incident. And well, again, I was the bad guy. Rules are rules, but apparently they, they seem to be not the same rules for everyone. Okay, given this was a different situation. They claimed the technical inspection made a mistake. Max, Max's team manager had been told that Max should marshal, but this driver Oh, so he, uh, he didn't know he was supposed to take it to technical in inspection. Somehow it was technical inspection's fault that his car wasn't there. Okay, whatever. Bullshit excuse. Anyway, that was that. Then things got, things got a bit more interesting. Same year, 10-scale uh, euros for... Yeah, 10-scale euros were in Spain. Same guy, same guy, again. He had now banned me from attending any RC races in Spain. He had banned me from the country of Spain when it came to radio-controlled cars. Jesus, when is this gonna end, I was thinking. I'm <laughs> like, this guy, this guy is incredible, I was thinking. So now I can't race RC cars in Spain? Wow. Because I filmed the video of him being a hypocrite. 
Because I was invited to do a Spanish national. Why? Because when you were a kid and you played hide and seek, your friends wouldn't look for you and just left you there. Because you probably was a dick back then too. I don't know. Anyway, I wasn't going to have any of that. So I was definitely going to go. So I think there were some discussions even before the race about this. And I basically got someone else from EFRA to say, okay, you, you're going to be able to race. We're going to have to kind of smooth this over, but we're going to make this work. Don't worry. So I went, we had some meetings, went to smooth some shit over and it was okay. And I almost, I, I'm like, I can, I'll bury this now. Like, it's good. We're okay. I, I, I felt, you know, I'm sorry. I, I spoke my piece. I said, we shouldn't have rules like this. Like, rules shouldn't have such negative uh, effects on people. You should always try to interpret rules for the best of the race, for the races, for everyone's enjoyment. That's what you should do. That, that was kind of my point. And then I apologized. I said, I'm sorry. I, you know, I'm sorry about what I wrote when I called you names or whatever I did. I can't remember anymore. But I just apologized for that. And I was over it. Things were good again. Then the Euros in Sweden happened. And I must admit, I kind of blew a gasket there. Now I have to say this same this same Spanish individual was not present, but his sidekick definitely was, and the same referee was. This same referee was heavily involved in the Max situation of non-marshalling and rules are rules and you are not allowed to race. This marshal, I mean marshal, this referee definitely knew what the situation was, right? So we have the same referee. We have a Spanish sidekick running, the, pulling the strings, and uh, I'm going to be banned from Ephra. <laughs> I just realized, nah, I don't care anymore. Okay, so what happened? Same exact scenario. Finals day. I actually qualified direct to the semifinals. Amazing, I know. Just like in the beginning of this video when I was saying how I'm not perfect, I bet that came as a shock to many of you. And uh, this is now the second shock. So no, I'm not perfect. I know, shocking. I'm sure you assumed I was. And uh, the second shocking thing is I qualified direct to the semifinals. I did pretty well. And you know, when you qualify direct to the semifinals, normally it's good because you can sleep late, you can just relax, you can get to the track when you want to and kind of prepare and focus for your race. Not this time. Now we had to marshal in the morning. And it was, they said this so many times. You have to marshal in the morning. There was a fucking roadmap of marshalling, a map on the, the, the results board. I think on two different places they had this thing. Like, ah, these guys marshal their arrows and text and everything. Like, it was super clear, super clear, so no one could misunderstand this shit. They said it in two different team manager meetings, I believe. I was told many times, I have to marshal. I have to marshal in the morning. I have to marshal in the morning. I'm like, do I really have to marshal in the morning? I make sure, do I have to marshal in the morning? Yes, you have to marshal. We're not going to change this. Uh, JQ, semi-finalist, marshal in the morning. Cool. I get there in the morning, I marshal. We have to marshal both the two first mains. Okay? Three guys are missing, I think. No Italian kids there. Where are the Italian kids? They're not marshalling. Oh, shit. I see the Spanish sidekick. While I am marshalling, I see the Spanish sidekick in the pits. He's going crazy. He's going to the Italians. Like, looking for them. Like, what's going on? Where are the Italians? What? There's no marshal. The club marshals for them. Okay, so these guys did not marshal. They didn't. So I'm, I'm out there on the track. I'm out there on the track. I'm, I'm looking at Carlos. I'm just waiting for him to look at me. And I'm yelling at him. Because I know he knows what's coming. He knows what's coming. So he looks at me. I, I just go... I go like this, done, they, 
done. He sees me doing that. I, I was so happy. I said, done. Carlos, they're done. They're done. Now, obviously, I know this is not going to go well. Because these Italian kids, these guys are fast. Like, you know, there's this one Italian kid who could have won that race. After qualifying, you could say that this guy could actually win the European Championship. That's how good he is. And he didn't marshal. So I was just loving it because I knew what was going to happen. I knew it. I just wanted to see it unfold. Okay? So what do you think happened? Uh, you know, what do you think happened? These guys didn't marshal, but they were fast. They were fast Italian kids. At least one of them with a legit chance of winning the European Championship. Everyone knew they didn't marshal. One year previous, a 15-year-old kid spent his parents' money, my money, all of his summer holiday, driving to Spain, practicing the whole summer for the European Championships, wrenching late into the night, preparing for this race, qualifying's done, rebuild his car, he's ready for the main, he doesn't marshal because he didn't know he needed to marshal. What happens? Rules are rules. Sorry, kid. You can't race. Right? What happens in Sweden? Nothing. Nothing happened. I'm serious. They got a fucking warning. They didn't even have to start last in the race. This guy fucking started second or third in his semifinal. He did it, Marshall. Not even start in the pits. 10 second penalty. Fucking do 10 push ups before you race. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, fuck. That was awesome. Like, you can't even find a better example of hypocrisy. And these guys are running the sport. Nice. Nice. So, the explanation was that uh, I, I, was, I went to ask them that I thought rules were rules. Rules are rules, right? <laughs> you know? And uh, I believe that explanation was that it had not been clearly stated at the team manager meeting where it had been fucking super clearly stated and drawn on the blackboard or whatever whiteboard they had there. And there had been posted notes uh, on various places explaining and they had even... Uh, uh, said on the speaker that we have to marshal and miraculously everyone except three guys were actually there in the morning marshalling even i was there which is maybe that biggest surprise of all like if i'm there then it must have been really obvious because i'm usually always late and don't get that and i didn't hear this and i'm all over the place but i was there i was marshalling but that was the excuse so somehow they took the blame and they fell on their sword and they let these Spanish kids race. So I think, I think they weren't being entirely honest. I think what it was that they like having these dick measuring contests. And when it's someone who they feel like they can get away with kind of cheating in the contest and winning, like me <laughs> or Max, they'll do it. But then when it's someone who's really, truly a star of the future, you know, big boy, you know, this is a good guy. No, we can't do that. No, that would be wrong. What are we going to do? Like everyone's going to think we're idiots now. We can't do that. So they let them race. And exactly, it was the most fulfilling thing was that I had said, in Spain the previous year, I had said, this was one of my arguments. I said, uh-oh, is my phone dying? Is my phone dying right now? Too, too much ranting. I had said, I understand that you can do this now because it's Max. And Max is some nobody from Finland. Right? But I said, what if it's Robert? What if Robert could win the European Championship, but he doesn't marshal? 
Are you really telling me you're going to tell Robert, rules are rules, you can't race, and you know what they said, you know what these Spanish dudes said? They said, of course, rules are rules, he wouldn't be allowed to race. One year later, what happens? They race, they don't even have to start from the back of the grid. Yeah, just go out there. Sorry, you didn't marshal, we weren't clear enough. Ay, ay, ay. This is the kind of bullshit I can't stand. I really, 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 really can't stand this kind of bullshit. Yeah. Wow. What a rant. I just felt like I, I needed to get that off my chest. Different rules for different people. No integrity whatsoever. And all because of the wrong attitude. The whole attitude of being selfish, short-sighted, driven by your ego, uh, like this vindictive nature. I can't really, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what motivates them. I'm not that kind of person, so I can't tell you. Like, yes, I make some jokes, like I have a sale, uh, return your car. I mean, sell me your old car and I'll give you a discount. And I say, if you return a Durango, one of which I have here, so happy. If you return a Durango, we give you a bigger discount, right? I'm such an asshole. Uh, that's just a, like a funny, sarcastic dig at them because they've been idiots to me in the past and lost me tens of thousands of dollars and they're just smiling about it, you know? But I'm not going to really do something bad to anyone. And I really would like RC Racing to be better than it is now. And I've done a lot for that too. I do a lot which is free. Set up guides, even these Facebook videos when they're actually, you know, good, not rants, but like about roll sensors or shocks or whatever. These, this applies to all cars. Most people that ask me stuff on Facebook don't race my car. Do you realize that? There's probably some Spanish guy who runs on the track that this idiot owns or runs or whatever, who asks me something and I'll help him. Because I'm not this selfish, short-sighted, Gimp, like this guy. And that's, that's what this rant is about. Just Maybe if they see this, I haven't been reading your comments. Maybe if they see the comments, hopefully you're on my side here. Hopefully they, they look in the mirror and realize that they aren't contributing anything positive. And their actions are actually harming people. So they aren't heroes. We should all be trying to make this better and more fair. And when, when there's a situation where you need to interpret a rule or you need, need to make some hard decision, you should always make the decision for the greater good. For the, who, how can we do this so no, one, uh, so no one suffers unnecessarily? How can we make this so most people are happy? How can we make this fair? Okay? That's what you should do. Racing should be fun. It shouldn't be that we have this rule, rules are rules, this and that, and make everything bullshit unfair and people arguing. It's, why? There's no need for that. No need for that at all. Okay? If someone organizes a race and you don't like that person, don't put a race on the same day to try and get people to go there instead of the other race. That's dumb. You're just going to kill the local scene by splitting it up. Yeah. That's about it. That's about all I have time for and energy for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking for, uh, what's his face? Sandra right now. Hey, don't call them, don't call them toy cars. This is serious business. This is my livelihood here you're talking about. E-buggy, we're done, man.
See you later.